Hello everyone, bonjour, koi kakana, welcome to EDU 5105, Interprofessional Education in the Health Professions. My name is Rachel Grant and I will be your professor for this course. But before we go into who I am, I'd like to open our course by giving thanks with an um, Anishinaabe prayer. And this was shared with me by Katrina White Duck, who is from the Algonquin Nation, and incidentally is also one of my in-laws. Uh, so I will be reading it in English, but I will attempt the first and last line in Algonquin. My apologies if I butcher the pronunciation. Miigwech kaji meni do anj aki. Thank you, creator, for creating the earth. Thank you for every living thing in it, the grass, the fruit-bearing bushes, the trees, for all the medicine and food. Thank you for all the animals, ones that crawl, the four-legged creatures, ones that fly, and ones that live in waters, and the ones that are medicinal, and the ones that are edible. Thank you for the water and everything in it that is so useful. Thank you for giving me air I breathe so I can live a healthy life. Thank you for the fire you gave me for warmth and for light. Thank you for the sky and everything that is in it, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Thank you for my grandfathers and grandmothers and all of my family. Help me live my life in serenity. Help the sick, bless the dead, the poor, and the ones who suffer from hunger. Thank you for my life. Miai kichi miigwech. That is all and thank you. And the first time I heard this giving of thanks, um, Mona Toli, who is also from the Algonquin Nation, uh, told us to consider how we are dependent on all of these things to live, but they're not dependent on us. And in that regard, we are all equals when we're coming together to give thanks like this. Just as how we're all equals when we're coming together to learn in EDU 5105. So who am I? My name is Rachel, and I am a PhD candidate and a part-time assistant professor here at the Faculty of Education, University of Ottawa. And despite working for you, Ottawa, I do not live in Ottawa anymore. Um, an advantage of the HPE program being fully online is I can live wherever I want. Uh, so my commute is about 10 seconds from my bed to my desk, despite not living in Ottawa. I also get to now enjoy a very lax dress code, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, so I live more in between Ottawa and Montreal now, um, on the unceded territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Wendak Nyon Wensayo, and the Kanyin Kehaka Nations. Um, I'm originally from the Fraser Valley, though, of British Columbia, um, in the traditional lands of the Ustolo and the Kwantlen First Nation. It is one of the most beautiful areas of Canada, in my opinion, but I, am of course, am extremely biased because I grew up there. And as a settler on this land, I offer my gratitude to the traditional guardians of this land. I honor their courageous leaders, past, present, and, of course, future. And I give thanks to those who continue to share this land with me, as well as their teachings with me. And as you may have noticed from my credentials, I started off my career in nursing. Um, my bachelor's degree and my master's degree are both in nursing. And I worked in family medicine and obstetrics before I turned to the dark side, that is academia. And how I found myself in academia is actually very related to this course. So for my master's degree, I did a course-based program, very similar to our MED program, um, except I had to do a practicum and a capstone project at the end. And I opted for a degree like this because I did not want to do a thesis. Undergraduate research courses did not do it for me, didn't leave me feeling warm and fuzzy towards research, and I just wanted none of it. I wanted to work as a nurse educator. I had no interest in PhDs or being a professor or research or any of that. So in my master's, I took a course on interprofessional education and collaboration, and my mind was blown. So many things I had seen as a nurse just suddenly made so much sense. And I had a whole new vocabulary, new theories, and I went a little nuts on the library searches because I just had so many questions. And a lot of my questions, as I found, though, didn't have answers yet because no one had actually done the research yet. So I approached my professor for the course, Dr. Joanne Goldman, about doing my practicum placement with her because I just desperately wanted to know more about IPE. And I ended up doing my practicum placement in research at the Office of Continuing Professional Development at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Toronto. And for my capstone, I did a scoping review um, on interprofessional education within the Canadian nursing literature. So yeah, despite selecting a master's program with pretty minimal research components and no thesis, I still did a major research project. And that did actually count as a master's thesis equivalent when I applied to the PhD program. And before the amnesia set in and I forgot about how difficult grad school was and I decided to go back, um, I got to work on some really cool projects. Um, I got to work on quite a few projects also with the late Dr. Scott Reeves, who was pretty much a celebrity status within the IPE, in IPE IPC world. Um, I have participated in quite a few interprofessional um, research projects, such as in operating rooms, looking at surgical safety checklists, um, ICUs, some stuff in family medicine more recently. 
Um, I've also done some research in pharmacy and nursing. I've also done some more theoretical research, such as trying to come up with more consistent terminology for educational interventions, including interprofessional education. Um, so while in the past few years I haven't done as much explicitly interprofessional research, as in like it's not in the title of the research study, uh, all of my work inherently has an interprofessional component. In my opinion, interprofessionalism just makes everything a little more exciting and a lot more complex. Um, so I'm not particularly interested, from a research perspective at least, um, things that focus on just one professional group. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not my thing. However, um, all this being said, I am more than just an academic. Profs are people too. Um, so I am also a daughter, a sister, an auntie, a friend. And as of last week, I am also a wife, because uh, my now husband and I finally tied the knot. Uh, I am a settler ally, uh, which hopefully is already becoming evident. Um, and most of my in-laws are indigenous. I'm also neurodivergent. I have ADHD, which my husband says makes me very colorful and fun and creative, but it also means certain things in my personal and professional life are more challenging. Like I don't always have the uh, focus reserves for grading, unfortunately. Um, but I do think this also makes me a lot more compassionate as an educator um, and hopefully a little bit more fun. And all of these different pieces um, of my identity play a role in who I am as a professor and as a person, of course. Um, and in my spare time, when I'm not doing academic stuff like grading papers or reading journal articles or analyzing some stats, uh, I really enjoy baking. For our wedding, I baked all of the desserts myself, uh, which is a huge undertaking. Don't really recommend it. Um, but I told my husband that my midlife crisis will probably be opening a bakery, so stay tuned for that. All right, so onto the course. What are we doing in this course? So as the course title implies, this semester we will be exploring interprofessional education. Um, however, we will be branching out beyond just education to also consider interprofessional collaboration and teamwork, which I will often collectively just call interprofessional practice for sake of brevity. And the reason why I try to take a broader lens here is because I find these areas are just so interconnected, especially for learners in this course. Um, I tend to have a lot of nurse educators, for example, um, people who teach in clinical environments, residents. Um, so just a lot of people teaching in a clinical environment. And in that sort of environment, interpersonal collaboration and teamwork and learning are just so enmeshed in one another. Um, so we'll be talking about all three throughout the semester. And I noticed while looking through the class list that there are quite a few people from outside of the health professions education stream joining us this semester. So hi, welcome to our little corner of the faculty. Um, I can't tell from the class list though, of course, who actually has a background in healthcare and who doesn't. Um, so if you don't, just be prepared for the bulk of the readings and discussions being a little more centered around healthcare. Um, since this is a course in the HPE stream. Um, but I have worked in some readings that are a little bit broader, um, and the topics that we're discussing this semester are certainly applicable to other educational and practice settings. So here's broad strokes of what we're going to be discussing this semester. Um, I tend to break up my courses, including this one, into two-week modules, so you have a little bit more time to engage with the material um, and discuss these different concepts with your peers before we move on to a different topic. So in module one, we're going to be focusing on getting to know one another, learning the basics of interprofessional practice education, evidence supporting it, things like that. Um, so like, what is the difference between interprofessional collaboration and interprofessional teamwork? What about interprofessional, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary? So we'll be delving into all of that um, probably in our second week. In module two, we're going to talk about theories and discourses related to interprofessionalism. And I know, I'm sure that sounds like a total snooze fest. But a lot of students actually really enjoy this module because these various theories act as a lens for them to dissect their own interprofessional experiences. Um, students tend to also particularly really like the discussions we'll have um, about power and socialization. In module three, we're going to build off this discussion of different theories to branch out and talk about barriers and conflict in interprofessional practice and education. And when I first started teaching this course years ago, I pulled my prospective students to find out what they wanted to learn about. And overwhelmingly, this is what people reported they want to learn about. Like, if interprofessional practice is so great, why don't we see more of it? What are some barriers? And how do we handle the conflict that can occur and probably will occur uh, between the different professional groups? In module four, we're going to talk about how we can approach teaching and assessment in IPE. So this is going to be a much more practical module. Um, we'll also be bringing together ideas that you may have been exposed to in other courses, like learning objectives, teaching strategies, things like that. Um, and a lot of learners find this module really helpful in creating their final project, um, but we'll delve more into that in another video. Module five, we're gonna be talking about patient involvement in interprofessional education. 
And something that I also added to this module last year is also discussing Indigenous-led partnerships in IPE. And last year, this module was probably the most impactful for most learners. Uh, many hadn't really considered the patient um, as a member of the care team before, and particularly not in regards to interprofessional education. And Indigenous history and issues in healthcare were completely new for probably the majority of the class. Um, while there were a few Indigenous learners in my course and some people who had, say, worked on um, a res, uh, for most people this was entirely new content. And in our final full module, we'll have a virtual class conference where we share our final projects. This way you can get broader exposure to different professional groups and issues. Um, more on this later too, but it's a pretty fun module. And that's the general plan for our semester together. Um, I will be posting more videos soon, um, going over our syllabus, assignments, and activities we're going to be doing together this semester. But I think for now this is probably enough for you to digest. Um, so welcome once again to EDU 5105, and I will see you all online.